Henson Ange, followed by Justin Holstrom, Jason Tetlow, Thomas Philippides, number 659. Thank you. Please proceed. Yeah. Um, my name is Henson Ong. Forgive me, English is not my first language. I am a legal immigrant, and I am an American by choice. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to express my opinion and give my testimony in opposition to the majority of the proposed bills which do nothing to deter future crimes. Gun control does not work. Your own history is replete with um, high school rifle teams, Boy Scout, marksmanship merit badges. You could buy rifles at the hardware stores. You could order them, mail order, delivered to your home. Your country was awash in readily available firearms and ammunition. And yet, in your past, you did not have mass school shootings. Other people have already expressed the question, what changed? It was not that the availability of guns suddenly exploded or in, in, uh, increased. It actually was decreased. What was changed was societal decay. Hey, hey. Hey. If gun control actually did work, Washington, D.C. and Chicago would be the safest cities in your nation, but it is not. They have the toughest gun laws and the highest crime and murder rates. Now, um, some people have asked um, and called the AR-15, they called the AR-15 a weapon of mass killing. Well, it turns out that there are a few government agencies which disagree with that characterization. The Department of Homeland Security has stated that a rifle chambered in 556 NATO with a 30-round magazine is suitable for personal defensive use. I have documentation on that. It is HSCEMS-1212-00011, solicitation for the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency. Now, who needs an AR-15 with 30-round mags? That question has also been brought up. And I would like to put forward that had the Koreans in the LA riots not had AR-15s and AK-47s with 30-round magazines and Ruger 30s, their businesses would have been burned to the ground like all of the other businesses in their neighborhoods. Theirs stood because they stood their ground. I would also put forward the conjecture that had the 10,000 students at Kinnaman Square not been unarmed, things may not have resulted in so many of them disappearing. In your own laws, United States versus Miller, 309, U.S. 174, 1939, it was made clear that the type of firearms protected by the Second Amendment were those specifically useful and common for military use in defense of the state. I would like to note that the state is not the government. The state is the people. In Lewis... Excuse me, Mr. Andrew, if you would... In Lewis versus United States, 1980, it is stated that the Second Amendment guarantees no right to keep and bear a firearm that does not have some reasonable relationship to the preservation and efficiency of a well-regulated militia. It has nothing to do with hunting. Uh, the militia, as per the debates in the convention, shows plainly enough that it is composed of all males physically capable of acting in concert for common defense. And further, that ordinarily, when called for service, these men were expected to appear bearing arms supplied by themselves and of a kind in common use at the time. Mr. The AR-15 is the most common and popular rifle in America would at you this please, time. Would you please wrap up? I will wrap up. I would like to wrap up with a statement from Judge Andrew Kozniski uh, in Silveria v. Lockyer, uh, 2003. My excellent colleagues have forgotten these bitter lessons of history. The, projects, the prospect of tyranny may not grab the headlines the way vivid stories of gun crime usually do, but few saw the Third Reich coming until it was too late. The Second Amendment is a doomsday provision, one designed only for those exceptionally rare circumstances when all other rights have failed. A free people can only afford to make this mistake once. Thank you.